chance to sit in on a recording session with, with Second Sense. Let's take a look. We have, a, we have a, an idea of what we wanted to play when we first got together. Okay, we, we got a, a repertoire of maybe 30 or 40 songs. Solid. We had them down solid, okay? And they're varied in style, you know? We didn't try to stick to one type of band or one type of material, you know? It's still rock, but there's all different kinds of it, you know what I mean? And uh, that seemed to be... Uh, what we thought the crowds would want. We went in to see a club owner one night, and uh, it was one of our first nights that we really went out and hit the pavement. We had a couple of appointments to see club owners that night. And we went to see one guy, it was our first call during the night, and we had this whole spiel for the guy about what kind of act we were and uh, music we played and, you know, how well we worked together and all this stuff. You know, and he just laid it on the line to us. He says, I don't care. He says, how many people can you bring in here? That's all I want to know. What we've been bumping into is that uh, we're all competent musicians. Al Renino, our bass player, is one of the finest bass players I've ever heard in my life. I mean, not just around the area, in my whole life, you know. And Doug Brown, the drummer, of course, I've known him for years. And, you know, each day I listen to the guy, he comes up with something new and different. And just, you know, they're amazing musicians, you know, they're really amazing. But unfortunately, the way music is going now <clears throat> is just that it really, the crowds, re it really doesn't matter to a crowd how well you can play your instrument. That's more for the jazz crowd, you know? And, you know, the real uh, connoisseurs of music, you know? They, they appreciate those real bizarre chord changes and odd tempos, you know? But uh, it really, when you're playing the clubs, people want to go there and have a great time. That's all they want to do. They want to dance, they want to drink, and uh, they want music that they're familiar with, first of all, and they, that they can really dance up a storm to and really feel something for, you know? And uh, we do that with the copy material, you know? Play a few Billy Idol tunes and, you know, dance floor is packed. And uh, it's just trying to get our originals to have the same effect. writing. I used to take it really personal. I used to write a song front to back. I had my arrangements all worked out. My vocal lines, my bass lines, even the drum parts. I don't even know how to play the drums, but I had a strict idea of what I wanted done. And uh, a, a good drummer would give me, you know, would say, you know, I don't think that's going to work. Try this. And I'd really take offense to it, you know. And uh, it was really stupid on my part. I still remember when I used to do that. It was so dumb. Oh. The way the band is going, all three of us are putting into the writing consistently. You know, definitely a group effort going on there, which is, I think, is great because it saves me so much time. When I write something and I think it's good, no matter what, <laughs> no matter how good I think it is, if I play it for the other guys, they always find something. And then I think, yeah, yeah, they're right, so I'll change this part around a little bit. I end up rewriting the whole song, you know? If we could, if, you know, like we've been doing, we'd do it together. And if there's any question as to what part should go where, or this should be here instead, it happens right away. And it turns out a lot better. You know, the song is much tighter. It sounds more like the band instead of, you know, if I wrote the song, it sounds like me, you know. But it sounds more like the band if we all write together. We all have our inputs. <laughs> The 
drummer, Doug, and I, we, we try to go out to all the clubs and keep a, you know, a first-hand view of what's happening so we know when we learn our next tune that it's not bizarre, that it's not going to be any use to us, you know. It's just people are dancing more than ever now, you know, and they just like to be... What's really happening is that I hate to say this, but the video dance clubs are really doing well. You know, there's no band to pay and there's no quirky musicians to deal with. And if the band's too loud, you turn one knob. <laughs> and, the, you know, the record turns down. You know, the DJs are doing great. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, there's nothing like a live band that plays well, you know. I'm not just saying that because I'm a musician. I'm saying that as an outsider, right? If I went into a club and I had the choice between a DJ and a band, I'd take the live band any day. I mean, as long as they're good. If they're really bad and they're really loud and they don't play anything I know and their originals stink, I mean, that, you know, that's a different story. And, you know, bands like that are hurting the rest of us, you know. The people, you know, really like to, to dance in video clubs now. It's, it's really, a, really a wave right now. God, I hope it doesn't last. <laughs> a mailing list that we've been making out. It consists now of about 250 people. It's still small. I've talked to some bands that have mailing lists of about 2,000 people. But uh, it is a good way to accumulate your mailing list. At each job you put like a guest book <laughs> with the guy at the front door, you know, and you know, he as, he as people leave or come, you know, he asks the people to sign the book, and some do, you know, and you accumulate a few names there. And uh, what we have is a flyer that we send out once a month with all our dates on it and where we are and the phone numbers of the clubs in case they want to call. And we uh, print up our logo and we put a picture on it and we give a phone number for the band for further information, you know, at one of our houses. We, uh, we try to keep our costs down, of course. Uh, especially with the mailing list, I can really get out of hand with postage. So, uh, if if we split up the responsibilities, like our bass player lives in White Plains, so uh, we might give him White Plains to, you know, we'll do it by car. We'll get his area, and our drummer Doug lives up north from me, so he'll get that area by his car, and I'll get my area by my car, and it, we cover a lot of ground and just an evening from like say 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock at night. The show will rock this show. I'm really happy that you chose us to be honest. This is really an honor, I, you know, personally. And I, I'm happy for the other bands that are going to get the same opportunity. The publicity that comes out of this is great. The video is, is coming along so good, and well, you'll see it in, in a little bit. It's been great to be on Real Rock. It's time for the highlight of our program, Second Sound. First music video produced exclusively for Real Rock. It's called Run for the Sky, and you can only see it here on Real Rock.
show. Many thanks to everyone of Friars. Also, a special thank you to Second Sounds. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you.